I'm Jenny Fish with One Big Happy Yarn Company. Welcome back to episode two in our cable class knit along. In this episode, we're gonna be learning how to make the double diamond pillow. Well, we'll be making all these intricate cables. We'll be knitting flat and I'll teach you every step. Let's get started. First off, let's talk about the yarn for the double diamond pillow. We have this jewel spun, 100% acrylic, so it's washable, super soft and squishy yarn that works up amazing in the different colors. It has stripes on its own, so no changing colors. Gorgeous, and it's all in one ball of yarn to make this pillow. We're also using the Cascade 220, which is 100% superwash wool, and it's solid colors, so if you want a solid, you're doing great there. So that's the yarn that we have in our kits. And then the needles. We are using a US size nine. We are knitting flat. So you can use straight needles, you can use a circular needle, however you like to knit, you can use those needles. And um, I like to use a circular needle, I just always do, so you'll see me using that, but don't hesitate, you can use straight needles. Um, we are gonna be working cables in here, which is simply rearranging those stitches. To do that, we'll need a cable needle. We have these U-shaped cable needles here. They come in different sizes, so you can um, use whichever one fits the gauge for you. And, or a double-pointed needle, which I'll show you how to do that as well, but I tend to always just grab a double-pointed needle when I'm doing my cables. Um, then you'll need your other supplies, such as scissors, a tapestry needle, stitch markers, lots and lots of stitch markers. When I'm working cables, I like to use stitch markers to help keep me on track with my pattern. Um, we will be working off of a chart. The pattern does have the written instructions plus the chart, so you can use either or, whichever works for you, or you can start out using the written instructions and then transition over to the chart once you get an idea of how all the stitches are working. Uh, then highlighter is always good when you're using a chart. Highlighter tape, post-it post notes to help keep you on track on your chart, and then um, dental floss for a lifeline. If you don't know what a lifeline is, you simply, once you've got to a point where you're like, hey, all of these are perfect underneath, I wanna secure this position in my knitting, you can run the dental floss through there, and if anything happens later on, you can rip down to that dental floss or keep it there until you're done and then pull it out. So those are some of my supplies that I have. Now let's talk about gauge and cables. When you're knitting stockinette or you're knitting garter, all the stitches are uniform, they all stay together, so you can get a real good gauge sample right there and then. When you are knitting cables, keep in mind that these stitches are being rearranged and they're being pushed and pulled in different directions. And by doing that, it's gonna change your gauge for that section. So in our pattern, we have listed out the gauge for each of these sections to help you stay on track and make sure that you're maintaining gauge. The pillow is 16 by 16, so as long as you keep it there, and the main thing is this pattern repeat right here repeats twice because it's a double diamond. That's the pattern. So as long as you can get through two of these double diamonds and you're real close to 16, you're good to go. So you're gonna do stockinette on this side so your gauge will be okay. You won't have to worry about all the change of gauge, but keep in mind that that is in the pattern. The stitches push and pull, so you can check and make sure that you're staying on target. So now let's talk about the special stitches in the pattern. These are listed in a special section that'll tell you um, how to make each of these cables. And they're defined with things like two over two right cross or a two over two left cross. We have the instructions as you go along, they're written out in the pattern, but we also have charts. And I wanna talk a little bit about the charts as I go into the actual stitches so that you can keep it kinda together. Here's what it looks like in the pattern. Something very similar to this, I've made a photocopy. And then, Here's what I did to keep myself on track, <laughs> is I cut out each of the sections and I just taped two pieces of paper together and I taped them all in the rows where they needed to be in line. So, and we also have them listed out, chart A, B, C, D, and E, along with the actual cable pattern's name, but I just thought A, B, C, D is a lot easier to kind of keep in order. And right side rows will be worked this going this way from 
right to left, wrong side rows will be worked from left to right. And I also highlighted this right up here for you. On my, on my copy, you'll wanna highlight it on your copy. When you're on a wrong side row, you may have different instructions or you do have different instructions for these two stitches, for these two symbols. So I like to highlight those to keep reminding myself that when I'm on a wrong side row, I need to look at the additional instructions. As well, something else, kind of a little insider tip here. There are no cables or rearranging stitches on the wrong side row. Keep that in mind as well. All of that work is done on the right side row. So now that we've got us set up for success here, we've got our chart, we've made a copy, we have everything in line. Now let's go over the special stitches so you know how to make these. Post-it notes are also great to keep track of where you're at in your pattern. I always tend to just narrow it down to the, to the uh, row that I'm gonna be working on. However, once you get deeper in, if you flip it over this way, then, um, or I'm sorry, if you flip it over this way, because this is how I like to, because I just like to see what I'm doing now. But when you go this way, you can see what you've done just to kind of make sure that you're still on target of where you should be. And um, it's like my brain works different than some people, but figure out which, works, which way works for you. There's no written rule on how you put your post-it note on your chart, but those are some examples. So let's talk about some cable basics. On my little sample right here, I am ready to make what's called a two over two right cross. So on here, I have these two stitches that are going to the right. Let me show you how we make that happen. We are gonna be crossing these two stitches over these two stitches going to the right. You can use a cable needle. This is a U-shaped cable needle. And to do that, you slide the first two set of stitches onto your cable needle. And for this, since we're going to the right, we'll hold it to the back. And you can just slide that right there and let it hang out. And then you knit two stitches. And then you bring your cable needle back up and you knit the two stitches off of your cable needle. And then, there we go. I split my yarn just a little bit, but that's okay. Start over, here we go. And that is a two over two right cross. Now, if we wanna do a two over two right cross using a double pointed needle, which is another option because basically cables are just rearranging your stitches and then working them. So the idea is to get those stitches rearranged. What I can do here is slide these two stitches onto a double pointed needle, hold that to the back, knit these two stitches, and then knit the two from the cable needle. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and work across the back. On the back side, uh, we just knit the knits and purl the purls. This is my little sample here, so I'm gonna finish these last couple of edge stitches, flip it over, and then on the back side of my work, I'm just going to knit the knits and purl the purls to stay in pattern. But be sure to just follow the instructions on the pattern that you're working from, just in case they throw in some craziness on you. But for these, they're all just knit the knits and purl the purls. So let's look at our work here where we've made the right cross, right here and right here. Now we're gonna go the other way. So we're gonna make our stitches cross to the left. So let me get back to my stitch marker here. So the stitches that are gonna be moving to the left are the first two stitches. So they need to go that way, which means I need to work these two stitches first and then work those. So to do that, I'm gonna slide the first two stitches onto my cable needle. And I'm gonna hold them to the front because I want them to be facing the outside of the work to be seen. They're the ones that are crossing to the left. Then I work the second two stitches. Then I bring my cable needle back up. And then I just simply knit those two stitches off of the 
cable needle. Just like that. And see how those two stitches now are leaning to the left. Now you can do that same thing with a double pointed needle as well. I want these two stitches to go that way. Here's a little trick that you can do without using a cable needle. I'm going to go through here and slide these two stitches onto my right needle. I'm going to pinch under to kind of secure those stitches and then slide my needle out of all four stitches and then right back into those first two. Now I have twisted those stitches without using a cable needle or a double pointed needle. Slide these two back on. I have rearranged these stitches and now I'm ready to work them. Then I can just go ahead and knit across all four stitches at one time. And check my work and they are leaning to the left. So that is a two over two left cross, just like that. Okay, now I'll show you on a three over three right cross and a three over three left cross. Okay, so on this little sample here, I've done a three over three right cross and a three over three left cross. Same principle as the two over two. We're just gonna manipulate six stitches, three and three. And I'll show you how, just to work this so you know. We've got um, first three stitches. I'm gonna slide onto my double pointed needle and I'm gonna hold those to the back because my second ones are gonna be going to the right and they're gonna be on the front of my work. So they go in front. And then I knit those three. And oh, one of the things on the double pointed needle when you use those, either use the same size that you're using in your project or maybe a size smaller. Um, you don't wanna go bigger, but if in case you're wondering what size double pointed needle I'm using, I'm using one that's the, uh, just a size smaller than my regular needle that I'm working with. And then I'm gonna knit those three off the double pointed needle. And that is the three over three right cross. See how pretty that is right there? It's crossing over. I'm gonna slide over here and I'll just show you the left cross real quick. I think you're getting the hang of this here. We're just rearranging the stitches and then working them. So now we're going to the left. So we're going this way. I'm gonna take the first three stitches, put them on my double pointed needle. These are going to be at the front of my work. I want to see this go from here, from right to left. So they're left cross. I'm going to hold that to the front of my work and then knit those three stitches from my active needle and then bring the double pointed needle up and then knit those three stitches. And there you go. I also want to back up for a second and show you what that looks like in a chart. Now here's a chart from the project. And right here is the X in the chart. And see how this section here, let me get a pointer. See how this X has an open area right here? That is left leaning cross on this X right here. It's going that way. That is a right cross. So as you're working your chart, when you see those symbols, they give you a good indication of which way you're going. And here's the two over two, right, this two over two, left. Then when you look at that, and then you also have a key over here that will tell you what those symbols mean and spell it out. And then in the pattern, it should give you the written, or it will give you the written instructions on how to specifically work those. So that is the basics of the two over two right cross, left cross, and the three over three right cross, left cross. But I've got more. I want to show you what happens when we do a two over one left pearl cross and a two over one right pearl cross. So you'll see those as well and you want to know how to work those. Okay, so I've switched out my samples and on here I want to show you how to make a two over one right pearl cross and a two over one left pearl cross and what that kind of looks like. I have reverse stockinette, so 
Reverse stockinette is basically where you purl on the front side and you knit on the back side. So it's opposite of, it's like the wrong side of stockinette. It's called reverse stockinette. And my cable that I've been working on this little pattern here is on the right side of my work in knit stitches. I've come to the point where I want these group of stitches to maneuver around. I want them to just go this way. Well, how I do that, I have a purl stitch here and two knit stitches here. I'm going to rearrange them and knit them, which is a cable. These stitches here are going from left to right. This purl stitch here is going to come up under the work and pop up on the other side. And that makes that pop. And I'll show you how we do that. You can use a cable needle. Slide this one stitch to the back of our work. That's the one in the two over one. Because these two stitches are going over that one stitch. Then I go ahead and I work these two stitches, which are knit. Now where the purl comes into place is this stitch is going to be brought to the front and I'm going to purl it just like this. And so that is the two over one right purl cross. And that's how you work that. And I'm going to go ahead and just pop over here real quick. Finish up this little seed stitch in the middle. Just that one stitch. Okay, now I have two stitches that are knit and a purl stitch. Now I'm doing a two over one left purl cross. Guys, it's the exact same thing, but flip-flopped from what we just did. We are gonna take the first two stitches that are crossing over this, but they're going to the left, so I need to take those off and hold them to the front. Then I'm gonna purl this stitch and then bring my cable needle back up and knit these two stitches. And so now I've successfully crossed two knit stitches over one purl stitch and they're facing to the left. It's just that simple. That's how we work those stitches. Okay, so now we've gone over all the basics of cables. I've walked you through all the stitches that you're going to be making to make this beautiful pillow. One of the things I did want to point out is I have stitch markers in between each of the sections, each of the charts that are in the pattern to give you a visual reference of where you might want to put your stitch markers so that you can section out each portion. And this is how it looks. You just go ahead and you'll do two repeats of the double diamond pattern. These you'll just keep repeating. Once you work the four stitch, then you start again on row one. I'm not working in the round on this one. This is knit flat. So you do, then you start here. You just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This one has six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You just keep. So keep your post-it notes on your charts because they will move around. Um, the one you want to base your whole thing off of is the middle pattern. It repeats twice. These repeat several times. Don't want that to get confusing. Once you're done with your panel, then you'll make your back panel. It's all stockinette. The pattern will tell you how many you need to cast on. And stockinette is knit one side, purl the other side, back and forth. And you have this lovely design. After you're done with all that, then you want to block it. And I did a wet block. This one hasn't been blocked yet because I'm just using this as a sample to show you. These have both been blocked. See the difference between blocked and not blocked? Cables, they need to be blocked. It makes them so beautiful. Same yarn for both of these projects, just different colors. See the difference. After you have blocked it, and I did a wet block, put it out with the on my blocking mats and my blockers and let it dry, then seaming it up. For this project, I started here and I did a mattress stitch all the way around. I've stopped here because I want to show you these last few, like how to do the mattress stitch and how I put my pillow in. So for the pillow, we have these decorative pillows, 16 inch. On our website at onebighappy.com, we have the kits. We have a kit that'll include the pillow and then we have one that doesn't. So if you have an old pillow at home that's 16 inches and you want to cover it, go ahead and use it or you can get the pillow form in the kit with us. And here is my pillow form. 
simply slide, you know, like go ahead and seam it up, slide it in. And it'll be a little squishy at first, but you can definitely move it around once you get everything, slide, you know, fluff it up when it's all done. Okay, so I've got my pillow form in here. I can worry about fluffing it up and making it look pretty when I'm all done. I just, my goal right now is to make this pretty mattress stitch seam. I am working with, and I'll make sure that the camera can see all of this for you guys. This is the end of my stockinette stitch on this side, and then I've got the stockinette stitch on this side. So mattress stitch or invisible stitch is what I like to use to seam the pillow up. And I go under the first bar and the second bar. These are under those stitches. Make sure that you can see. These are the edge stitches. I'm going under here and I'm capturing those bars that's between this stitch and that stitch and bringing my yarn through. Then I'm gonna pop over here and I'm gonna go under here. And these, although the measurements are both 16 inches um, for the front panel and the back panel, there's different amount of stitches because cables change your gauge. So I just kinda keep matching it up. You could put binder clips in here too, or you could use locking stitch markers just to make sure you're staying where you need to be. I just kinda pull it out to make sure. And if I need to adjust, then I adjust on the stockinette side. Um, if I'm getting a little off as far as matching the front and the back sides together. And it's fine because you're just going under those bars. And I do two at a time. I mean, if you find something that works best for you, go ahead. I just found a rhythm of going under two at a time and I thought it looked nice. And I keep my, um, my yarn a little loose as I'm going along and I'll get some in because um, once you pull, oops. Oh yeah, that's right. Nope. If, okay, so what I wanted to show you here is I, I went around a stitch. You don't wanna do that because then it'll get snagged when you go to pull it out. So just take that out and make sure that there is, that the, uh, you're not going under, like if I went under this one again, when I go to tighten this up uh, here, it's gonna pull this one and that one, the yarn's gonna wrap. You don't wanna do that, you wanna keep them separate. So I came up through here. When I come back through, I wanna go through here. I don't wanna go through this bar again. That'll tighten your yarn up and it, it won't um, cinch up the way you need it to. It'll get snagged. Okay, so I came up through here. Go through those two bars. Now I'm gonna continue going all the way up and when I get to this corner, then I'll show you how to work this other edge. Okay, so I've worked up to this corner and I wanna show you how we work across these two different kinds of edges. I have, this is a cast off edge. See these lovely stitches here? And this is the front of the work where I have all the cables. And then this is the stockinette edge and this is a cast on edge which looks just a little bit different but still kind of has the same look to it. I want to show you where I put my needle in to grab those bars to make the mattress stitch. On the on the front side here I'm going to go underneath the cast on or I'm sorry this is the bind off. I'm going to go underneath the bind off and pick up right there. Let's see if you can see that. And don't hesitate to manipulate these stitches around because you wanna get a good seat on your needle when you make these stitches so that they all stay together. And then I'm gonna pull through here and now I'm gonna come back over here. And it seems a little wonky and loose over here. That's okay, because once we get a few of these, we'll pull it and it'll come together. So just trust me. Going over here. On here, I want to go underneath this stitch Right there, so I have those two legs of that stitch on my needle, just like that. And I'm gonna do a couple more before I really pull it tight, just so in case I don't like the look of it, I don't have to search for it to undo it. Because you want this to really seam up nice and pretty. So I'm going underneath those two legs. I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna go underneath those two. 
And you can space this out and skip one, do every other one. Um, I tried doing a little bit longer of a spread and it puckered. So I went back and took it out and I did it a lot closer so that I didn't get that pucker. But that could be a design feature. Whatever you want. But yeah, I'd skip one, go to the next one. Wouldn't do more than that. And there's they're pretty close to the same amount of stitches on both sides. Um, but when you get about to the middle, then you're gonna pull the two together, pull the side out, and make sure that one side isn't really longer than the other, make sure they match up. Okay, now I've done a few of them. I'm gonna pull this and see how that just closes right up. And it almost looks like that stitch wraps around into the stitch on the front side. But that's an invisible stitch or mattress stitch for seaming. I'll do a couple more of these so you can see. I like to just get this sit in my rocking chair and it's almost like binding a quilt by hand. Just kind of sit back and focus on the handwork. So you know it's going to be beautiful in the end. You've done all this knitting. Put it all together nice and pretty. And skip over to here. See, I'm just lifting those stitches up and going underneath of them. And you know, a stitch makes a V. This here, where it looks like an upside down V, that's not the stitch. The stitch is the V. Like that. And then the top of the V. So I'm going in the top of the V, then the bottom of the V. And come back down here. Then I get a few in like that, and then I'll pull it up. Take a look. Oop. Pop that over there. See how those stitches is. So you do that all the way across, across the top, finish up the side, weave in your ends, and you have a pillow. Let me show you what that looks like over here. Here's our finished one that's all solid. And then we have our multicolor here. Thank you for joining me for our cable classes. We have dived into so many different kinds of cables. I know you now have the skills that you can accomplish these. Go check out OneBigHappy.com for the kit that includes the pattern and the yarn to make these beautiful pillows. And then join me in episode three where we go off the rails with the off the rails cowl. We are going from cables to horizontal cables. Amazing new technique. It'll blow your mind. It is off the rails. So join me for episode three of the Off the Rails Cow. Thank you so much and happy knitting.